throughout all these situations, I've always decided I'm in this situation. Now, whether it's going to change or not, I'm definitely going to work. Just if it's if it's not within my control, well, that's a whole other story. Right. If let's say it's something that is not going to change, I have no ability to change it. I may as well have the best attitude that I can to make this the best experience that I can. Hi, I'm Alex Fletcher. And I'm Rivki Silver. And this is Deep Meaningful Conversations, powered by Meaningful Minutes, the podcast where we explore the complexities, nuances, and joys of being a firm woman. Hey, everyone. We're glad that you're joining us on the podcast, as always. We're feeling a lot of joy about this episode of DMC. Like, it makes us happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, and I, I so love talking about things that bring me joy. Like, forget about organizing drawers. That is not what sparks joy. For what sparks joy for me is a good DMC. Yes, you are in the right business, Alex. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we are actually talking about joy yeah. on the podcast today how we feel it, how we find it when we're not feeling it, and how we can get more of it in our lives. Mm -hmm. The dictionary definition of joy is, quote, a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. So to me, that actually sounds and feels quite spontaneous. Like, it's that joy that just arises when you're not even trying to feel it, you know, versus like, I'm having a joyful moment and I'm happy, but in spontaneous sort of random moments. And I feel like it just reminds me of coming from a place of just like inner satisfaction, inner contentment, Beautiful. overflowing Beautiful. kind of joy. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely <laughs> see that. <laughs> so I once read a definition um, that described joy as, quote, those little moments that make you feel alive. <laughs> mm, I love that. And I know I know very much when I don't feel alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes. I know those I, I, I totally, you know, when you listen to a song and it's like you just feel alive. Right. It like lights you up. It lights inside. you up. I yeah. think that that's joy. So, you know, it's sort of that feeling also when you're, you know, taking a walk on that first warm day of spring where it's like, oh, this is what it feels like to be alive. Mm, yeah, it's right before the allergies kick in. Right before but, the allergies. But, yeah, but yes, exactly. <laughs> and um, even like, let's just say like a small parenting moment, you know, where you're just sort of relishing an experience with a child and you just feel a sense of love for that child. You know, yes. I think that's joy. It's these, these sort of small moments. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. There's, there's definitely been a lot written about joy, right? We all want it. Um, we all want to get it. And it's important to know that there's a difference between happiness and joy. Oh, that's true. Important distinction. Happiness is more long-term. Um, it's more of a, like a broad evaluation of how we're feeling about our lives over time. Mm-hmm. So kind of like a baseline, I guess. Um, and joy is really what we're talking about. It's an intense momentary feeling of positive emotion. Mm. And all the small moments that make you feel alive added up, th- those contribute to your happiness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I yeah. also feel like happiness is ba- based on that definition, where it's sort of an evaluation of like how you're feeling over a certain period of time. It's almost like more of like an intellectual thing. Like, am I happy? We're always asking, <laughs> am I happy? Oh, I'm not happy. So it's it's in your head, but like joy is not in your head. It's it's more like just a and feeling. It, right. It's just you don't even have to think about it. So An just emotion. have that emotion. Interesting. That that's that's a lot of food for thought. Yeah. yeah, yeah well, exactly. I was just thinking about what you're saying, but. You know, joy comes from many sources. It can come from things. Yes, it can come from possessions and material sure. possessions. Absolutely. For sure. Um, it can come from people and interactions and relationships. Um, and I think even like this discussion, Rifki, where we're talking about, you know, experiences that we've had with joy and talking about joy itself, just recalling moments can bring joy. Yes, absolutely. Like tapping into those memories and like reliving joy will bring more joy. So that's great. So it's probably good to do. Just like we have a gratitude journal, maybe we should have a A joy joy journal. journal. Oh, I love that. A joy journal. A joy journal and alliteration. Amazing. (laughs) So so by means of like introduction to the topic, let's talk about what brings us joy. Ah, good. So Alex, you go first. (laughs) How about an example of joy from a material thing and then an experience with a person? Okay. So my favorite joy moment is so silly, and pardon me, Starbucks, you get a shout out. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if you've ever noticed if you do drink Starbucks, um, their little line on the the cup says um, that first sip feeling. And that's brilliant. It's so smart because you, it's, you know, you've been like craving that iced coffee and then you get it and you take a sip and it's like, ah, well, like Coke, you know, like that also, they they, they tap into that, that as well. I don't remember what their line is, but it's definitely also. I forget something about joy or happiness actually. Something. I'm from Atlanta. I really should know this one. I don't know. I don't remember what it was. Um, 
But, you know, and then, you know, when you like get your coffee and you drink it and then you like just look at it yeah. and, and th- those words are just staring right you at you it. or you're holding it. It's cold day, whatever it is. Yeah. And like, it's brilliant marketing because we know there's like nothing like that joy of that first sip of something that you've been craving or something you wanted to drink or you wanted to eat. Yeah. It's a real small pleasure. And I've, I, I, Thanks to actually an author that I've been reading who really spends a lot of development in her novels focusing on food that her characters are eating. Um, Or she'll talk about, you know, being hungry and then describing a meal that satiated them. And it's it's really beautiful and it really just sort of makes you appreciate, you know... um, The the act of enjoying food and enjoying eating those small moments. Nice. um, And I don't know, I just... it's just something that I've been more mindful of. It's just so easy to forget about all that. Just like scarf down the food, whatever it is. Like right. these little moments where, you know, you appreciate the beauty of, of, of culinary, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, there's a reason that experience. food, there's a reason that foodies are, are right. a thing. Like, you know, because you can be yeah. so pleasurable. Exactly. So I'm not the foodie that's cooking it, but I appreciate the eating of it. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's your connoisseur. Exactly. There you go. Um, and yeah, you asked me about relationships. So... When I think of joy in relationships, I do think about children, and the joy is really, I think, a combination of my like love for nature and having my children in nature. Mm. So that that brings me joy. It's like if I see them like running in a field, I can't think of anything like more beautiful. Like that, or that sounds sounds yeah, gorgeous. Like appreciating the beach or like I, I just love children and nature together. That that is that a relationship? I'm not sure, but yeah, it's with my like sure, that brings me not? joy with my children. That's really nice. Yeah. What about you? All right, so. Joy from something physical. So I know that you mentioned before that organizing drawers does not do it for you. <laughs> it does do it for me. <laughs> I've always been very type A, so like organizing is like my jam. But hold on one second. Having someone organize it for you, I think is a different... Like let's no, say no, me doing it, myself. it for me. It's not going to give me no, no, the no, same like joy versus me doing, doing it, it myself. Right, like, right. like I think during Cheshvan, there was um, between Carpels that had like a, organi- like a 30-day organizing challenge or something. And um, one day I did my junk drawer and mm-hmm. I got like a pretty, like junk drawer. Of yeah, course, it was like, jammed with all sorts of junk. That's what it's there for. Hi, Rifki opens up these drawers. These are I junk know, drawers. I know, I <laughs> know. And I'm like so I have stuff, stuff. Yeah, I have stuff. No, because it's normal. <laughs> we all have them. We all have them. But I went and I organized it properly. And I'm telling you, I would like open it and like gaze at it. And it brought me such joy. Aww. I was like, that's so nice. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, obviously... Baruch Hashem with my family. Is my house usually organized and tidy? No, yeah, it's yeah. not. But when I can do like a little small area, right. like it brings me joy. I think also like just mentally, it's just it's there's something that's organized and neat and where it should be, yeah. and that's really calming. Right, and it's something that I need. So then obviously like, it's right. something that I have to work on, like not being okay not having because Baruch Hashem, the chaos of my life is fine. <laughs> but um, so joy from relationships. So like like you, definitely it's it has to do with my children. Mm. Um, like watching them enjoy something, mm-hmm. like watching them watch something and mm-hmm. like laugh their heads off at something <laughs> funny. Like I love that. Or if they do something clever or if they're nice to each other. Mm. <laughs> which is yeah. always nice oh, to those see. Those small moments <laughs> yes. that hardly ever exist oh, will bring you joy. Oh my gosh, exactly. So like those those are, and also um, joy from like having a really good DMC. Like when you're mm. really on the same page as someone and you're like connecting like intellectually or emotionally like that. Mm-hmm. That's also very joyful. Rifki, you're in the right business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you know, um, we're thinking about times where we feel joy in our lives, and I love our listeners while we're, enca- you know, experience, re-experiencing this, I think, for, for themselves um, about those small moments. But joy can feel very elusive when we're down. Yes. When we're in a mood or when we're going through a nisayon or a struggle or a challenge, it's just, it's really hard. I think the beauty of joy is that it's in the small moments. So if we can like tap into just like trying to appreciate those little things can help revive us a little to a certain extent. But sometimes even the awareness of those small things can just get drowned out. Absolutely. By overwhelmed, by pain. And like, you don't even have the headspace to be like, oh, I'm going to appreciate this first sip of coffee. Forget about it. You know, right, I can't even think right, about that. Right. Or exactly. Or like your child does something cute and you're like, yeah, but oh, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, world yeah. is horrible. Right. Like, yeah. I, so you're not yeah. feeling joy and it, there's no joy in the world in those types of moments. So the yeah. question is, you know, we can find joy, but how do we keep it alive? How do we maintain it? How do we sustain it? Especially in the moments where we really need it. Like <laughs> right. we need to tap it. To right, it, exactly, to get exactly. Us and when, that's when it feels like so unattainable. Mm-hmm. So today we're feeling joy over our guest, 
<laughs> because when we think of her, we think of her smile, her upbeat attitude, her simcha sachayim, and her positivity. And of course, we are talking about none other than Shandy Plotzker. Yep, actually, we're recording here, and I told my my nine year olds we're interviewing Shandy Plotzker. She, Shandy Plotzker is coming to our house. <laughs> <laughs> like, unfortunately, not. <laughs> <She's very cute. laughs> we should have her back and have her come to Cleveland. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Shandy is a singer and songwriter who gives so much chizik and inspiration to girls and women of all ages with her beautiful, unique, and creative music. She's also just very authentic and mm. shares her emotions and her connection to Hashem through her songs. Her music is catchy, but her positivity is also catchy. That's yes, so true. <laughs> so we invited Shandy to have a DMC with us because we want to know her secrets yes. about joy. Is she a naturally positive person or is this something that she needs to work on or she does work on? Um, <laughs> how does she handle the setbacks, the challenges? You know, how, how, is she able to maintain this positivity or or is it a struggle? And of course, like, how does she become Shinzi Plast Girl? Like, if she's going to come on, we're going to have to have that conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. <as well. laughs> so we hope you enjoyed this interview as much as we did. And you'll see you won't walk away from listening to this interview without a little bit of Shandy's joy rubbing off on you. Hey, Shandy, thanks for coming on and having a DMC with us. Thank you so much for having me. What a schuss. Yeah. <laughs> schuss is ours, really. <laughs> um, before we get to like the topic of joy, which we talked about a little bit before in the intro to the, the podcast, we wanted, we like, just have to ask, like, briefly, how did you, how did you become Shandy Platzker? Like, the singer, the songwriter, the amazing uh, person. <laughs> well, firstly, thank you. I, uh, it's all Hashem, and it's, it's a crazy, it's a really interesting situation because people say like, oh, did you dream of doing this? I mean, I dreamt of doing this in a very unattainable way. Like I, it didn't exist. Like I was like, this wasn't a possibility for me, but I never even planned to do this. Like, well, it's, it's a really long story and I don't know that you want the long story, uh, the long version of the story. So I'll try to keep it every time. I, by the way, every time I try to tell the story in a really short way, 60 hours later, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, think I don't Michael. have 60 hours. <laughs> no, I told the story one time and I was like, in a very brief version. Right, right. Well, I'll actually try to keep it really brief. Um, I'm going to start by saying that um, Mark Stroman did grow up very musical, um, but I was a little bit naive in the sense that I just thought everyone harmonizes when they're 10 years old. And I really just, <laughs> and, I, and, and it's a good thing because I didn't get to my head. Because my whole family was musical, it was just, it's like, oh, you don't play an instrument? Like, it was, <laughs> you know? Um, and I was always musical and I always appreciated music. I always attribute actually a lot of my style to my uncle, Leib Roberts, who is such a talented artist in England. Hmm. And he taught me to always think out of the box, nice. which I really, really appreciate and try to be just, just, just don't, don't pressure yourself to be in the box. Anyway, so growing up, music was all around me. Uh, I always like to say that the first person who really pushed me into this was Shimia Dar, and I know a lot of people know this. Uh, she was really a person who believed in me more than I believed in myself, and it wasn't that I was a, a person who didn't believe in myself. I just didn't even recognize um, yeah. really what I had, and I'm oh I'm so into that. I just told Shimia recently. I said, you know, she was about my age when we met. We have a, you know about ten plus year difference, and she was that person that believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. And I really try now to do that for other people. When someone says like any advice and I really try to push them kind of to repay so that because beautiful. it really jump started me. And then, I mean, so this is the long story part, which I'm going to say really short is that mm -hmm. I uh, was pushed constantly to put my music out. I didn't believe that it was okay. Call Isha wise. I didn't think there was a market for it. I didn't think it would go. I just, I literally didn't look at it as, as an option. Uh, I dreamed of it, dreamed and dreamed and dreamed. I like to say, I dreamed to be doing this like I dreamed of flying it was something I wanted to do but was so unattainable right. and that's why by the way as a side point I'm so grateful that this female market has opened up for girls because one of the biggest pieces of feedback that I get after every event and every show and every music video release is mothers telling me forget about me that I I am so grateful that my daughter knows that this exists that she can follow her dreams in a kosher way in its sneeze way that she doesn't have to just drop them and that you can go out there and do the things that you want to do and share what Hashem gave you with the world in a special way. And the fact that that exists now is so special. And I'm so grateful to all the pioneers. And I don't consider myself a pioneer. There were so many people that came before me and I would be like remiss to not credit them. I don't want to say by name, yeah. but there are so many people. Anyways, 
Amazing. But were you going to be one of those? It was like, you probably were like, it's like a pipe dream. Like, oh, am I, am I going to be listed amongst all those women? Yeah. <laughs> you know? It, I don't know. It's so crazy. I still like, sometimes people say like, oh my gosh, I just said, guys, I'm a potato. Like, I'm, uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm not potato. really. <laughs> delicious, a delicious potato. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, when I have to figure out where was I, where was I? So, okay. So, so I wanted to do it, but so Shimmy was the first one who really pushed me out there and I did small projects and I did, um, I did camp songs for years and I loved, I loved creating new songs and composing and, and, and writing lyrics. I did camp songs for years as a teenager. I had my home studio and people would come and it was really cute, but that was where it was going to end. That was it. And, um, and then, I mean, Shimmy Adara, like I said, was really constantly pushing me. And eventually she said to me the line that got me just, it got me. She said to me one day, Shandia Hashem gave you something. You don't have a right to keep it to yourself. Mm. Wow. Wow. It's not about you. Mm-hmm. And I think that was when the shift happened because to me, I was like, what? I'm going to go out there and be like, listen to my music. Watch me. I was like, that's right, not right. who I am. Right. It feels it uncomfortable, like in, in the in the thought of it, if you, right. It's uncomfortable and it even seems self centered. And I actually mm. just said recently, I told someone I used to think music was a self centered profession. It's actually the complete opposite. Mm. It's you're putting yourself out there, you're sharing things so that the world hopefully can benefit, that people can be inspired, people can be uplifted. And it always has to be about your audience. And that's when you know. That's how I keep my balance. Like, it's not about me. Of course, there are things that I'm like, I love, I want to share this song with the world. I want to, of course, in that sense, I love, I love creating music and I love being able to share it, but it can't be about you. Mm -hmm. It can't be about like me, 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 me. It has to be about how can this affect the world in a better way. So the minute that she shifted that in my mind, that it wasn't about me, that's when it became a possibility Mm -hmm. because I said, oh, this is not a selfish decision and doable, not doable. But at least my mind was changed. And then a um, couple of months later, I, as you can hear, I have a very hoarse voice. And I woke up one morning in September. Again, I'm really going to try to keep this short. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. This, this is, is the best totally part. fine. This is great. This is I great. We love it. I know this part of the story. And you better share you know, this. I, I don't know. I don't know. It. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. Okay. <laughs> I woke up one day, I've, I've been teaching for many years, and it was the, one of the first weeks of school, uh, going back two and a half years. Um, so what would that be? September of 2019, 2019, September 2019. And I woke up and I just, I sounded like this. I couldn't talk. There was no voice coming out of my vocal cords. So I had that a lot. I'm saying we all go through that as teenagers in camp. Uh, you know, we wake up after color world, we can't talk, and it's the best <laughs> part of camp. Um, and, you know, it's, it's great. Um, so I just figured I've, I've been hoarse at times in my life, and I actually just messaged my boss. I said, I'm so sorry. I have no voice. I'm, but I had an assistant, so, like, it was going to work out, and I had worksheets, and great. And I was waiting for it to pass. It didn't pass. Hmm. <laughs> and it was days. And then eventually, once I got to weeks, I went into some sort of denial, like, this is not a thing. I am fine. Everything's great. <laughs> and then, um, and then I got connected with Dr. Peak Wu, who I was told is like the top ENT otolaryngologist voice specialist in the country. They said, go to him and get a, you know, get a look at your throat. Something's wrong. I think it was a combination. And I've spoken to so many people um, who feel the same way. Sometimes when we almost fear a bad outcome, we push it off. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear him say something bad. I didn't want to hear him say that I had something really dangerous or that I had something irreparable. Mm -hmm. So I pushed off making an appointment until finally I made an appointment. And then I actually got my voice back like a little bit, like just, you know, I sounded a little worse than this. So what do I do? Cancel the appointment, Mm -hmm. obviously. Mm. I canceled the appointment and like a day later, my voice is gone again. And then I said, okay, we call back. And they're like, oh, there's nothing until January. Now this was in no. October. Oh no. <laughs> and I literally, by the way, to this day, Baruch Hashem, I'm so grateful that because I've shared my story, I have people reach out to me and like, I think once every three or four days, I get an email or a DM or something like, hi, my cousin lost her voice. Can you help her? This I wow. literally just got a message yesterday. Someone said that their cousin in Israel has voice loss and they're trying to get into a doctor and they can't get help somehow i've become some sort of voice Mm. and you should just know that because of my story i really i really am interested in the voice uh loss uh field and i really i am considering becoming a voice therapist so so yeah i don't know was your voice like a scratchy horse like this before like 
when you were singing I before you so. had this problem? It was all yeah, this is I your natural so. voice. I think so. Yeah, uh-huh. pretty much. It's funny. I just discussed that with someone because I also had like a very heavy like nasality, not in the way that you would think, like a nasality in my voice. I had like very big adenoids as a kid. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of like yeah, like tonsils, big adenoids. So I had like a certain nasality. Um, but I think I think I mean yeah, I think so. Not mm-hmm. as bad mm-hmm. because this was like this was like the breaking point. Um, and then since then, it's been very on and off. <laughs> um, mm. So basically, what happened? It was. I'll, I'll keep this part short, but honestly, this is another podcast in itself. Mm. What I learned during that time, waiting from October to January. And listen, it was on and off. There were times where I could talk, but I just could not sing. Or I could talk like but I could talk like this. Oh, and then gosh. there were times where I had a voice, but I was told, save it. Mm. Because if you talk, you're going to lose it in two days. And I would. Mm. Um, firstly, what my class had to put up with. Those mm. kids are now, I think they're the fourth grade now. We talk about it all the time. Third grade. They're like, yeah, like you had a speaker and I had an app. And I would, like, type on the app and say, like, girls, please take out your books. And the robotic What grade kids were these? What grade were they? First First grade. grade. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Oh my gosh. And it would say, like, girls, please take out your notebooks. I still remember because when I would tell them it was time for Kriya, it wouldn't read at Kriya. It would call it Kriya groups. And they would say, Laura, can you make the robot say Kriya groups? Because they thought it was so funny. Um, Yeah, I mean, it was entertaining, but also it was very challenging to teach a class with no voice, even though I had an assistant and a robot. Mm -hmm. And of course, then there's, like I say, the the main things I learned from this time is... (sighs) we take our voice for granted like yeah. nobody's business and what what's it like to not have a voice like i challenge all of you listening to go three days without speaking oh. number one it teaches you so much about control and anger when someone would say something mean to me i can't answer them back wow. and i have to control myself and i physically could at times but i was on vocal rest and i had to make the choice that i'm not allowed to there's the shame and the embarrassment of being in a grocery store and needing help and typing and asking the the, the the grocery person, like, can you help me find the vitamin B? And they're like, everyone's staring at me, like, are you? And then I would press speak and go, can you help me find the vitamin B? And everyone would look at me in the store, like, are you, what, like, what's going on? Yeah, and then hard. there was, of course, the really big part that I think we all take for granted is how much speaking really is a part of us as social people. I, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a very social person. I love people more than anything. And I would go, I went to a Hanukkah, pres- a Hanukkah, Hanukkah party with my high school friends. But I didn't see it. I couldn't say anything. Okay. I couldn't contribute to the conversation. And it was oh. so frustrating and upsetting. And it was very hard. So I learned a lot during those few months. Mm-hmm. But um, eventually, after much frustration, and I'm telling you a lot, a lot of tears, um, there were so many times where I would go into my mother. I worked with my mother for many years. And I would go into her office and just like mouth, like, and for those listening, I'm going to mouth it. So I'll tell you after what I said, like, I said, please call Dr. Wu. And she, I would sit there with tears streaming down my face and she would call with man speakers. I'm here with my daughter. It's been two months. She can't speak. She can't say a word, please. Any cancellations. She'd call every day. Eventually, Baruch Hashem, I got there. Mm-hmm. It was the biggest, best day of my life. January 19th, 2019. Mm-hmm. I won't even yeah, and you never like, cancel doctor's appointments, right? No. Never. <laughs> right? Never. And I basically barked him. I got into Dr. Wu, and he did what's called the laryngoscopy, where they put, like, a camera down your throat, and they ask you to make different sounds. And he pulls it out. He's like, you have, which, by the way, it's very cool to see that people who know voice really can predict this. So you, of course, know that Barcha Jaffe is a very special person in my life, musically and as a friend. And she was like, I'm telling you, you have nodules. She knew it. She's like, you have nodules. And she was right. He's like, you have nodules, which for those who don't know what nodules are, they are um, non-cancerous growths on the vocal cords. Hmm. Um, And they kind of, there's different types of growth. There's nodules, there's polyps. These grow as um, almost like, like a blister. That's, it's not really a blister. It's a growth that's embedded within your vocal cords. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's like embedded and it's also on top. So he said, well, I can just cut them, you know, I can do a surgery to remove them, but I'm just telling you that when I do that, I'm going to take a piece of your vocal cords with me because wow. they're, oh they're in your vocal cords. Inside, right, right. And I was like, okay, well, what's that going to do? And he said, well, your voice will change. You know, I don't know that you'll sing the same. I don't know that you'll, I can't promise you anything because I might take a piece of your vocal cords and it'll be a long recovery, no speaking for six weeks and this and that and voice every, and I was like, no, 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 this can't be happening. Like right. plan B. He's like, I don't really know of a plan B. He said, the only thing I can think of, and this is what I really was like, please. He said is if we, um, if we uh, try to shrink them, they are shrinkable 
technically speaking, if we do X, Y, Z, Q, R, L, M, N, P. And I'm like, oh my goodness. He's like, oh, I'm not so optimistic. They're so large. I don't think they're shrinkable. But if you a, change your diet, no dairy foods, no acid inducing foods, no fried mm. foods, no soda, no this, right? That's step one. Number two, he's like, you have to go to like forever. Like forever you couldn't have those things? Yeah. Like to this day, I mean, right now, like I make a choice. Like, I have a show next week starting probably tonight like i'm not gonna eat any of those foods because mm. and by the way tomatoes are like my favorite 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 and i can't oh. eat tomatoes but no it's okay it's okay it's, worth the <laughs> it's fine guys it's okay i'm okay but like my favorite dip on Chavez is this like israeli tomato dip and if it's the week of a show everyone knows i can't have it and it's fine it's a great sack it's really fun but it was, it was, so there was the change in diet he said you're gonna need to start with an incredible voice therapist minimally twice a week for two out for an hour each that means traveling to the city twice a week to work with our person um wow. and you must keep it up you need to have your adenoids out you need to have your turbinates reducted you need to have what's that your, i don't know what that is i don't eat honestly <laughs> i don't know what i know what adenoids are and i know what tonsils are it's like i want your adenoids out i want your tonsils out and i want your turbinates reducted they're they're I don't know. They're, they're Sounds pieces. like you know what you're talking about, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess everything I, I, except anyone for can Google it. They can Google it if they want. Yeah, exactly. I don't physically know what they are. They're they're a piece of your body in the same area. And then he's like, oh, and you have to have your entire nose reconstructed mm. because I I actually always had this. I was very congested. I said I had a bit of nasality, right? I was always very congested. I was like a mouth breather. He's like, your nose is not made for breathing. He's like, no, I didn't have cartilage in the side of my nose. I was like, Voldemort. Uh. <laughs> and no not not to that extreme but he, you know it really made issues with my breathing and he's like because you're not breathing through your nose you're drying you're breathing through your mouth your mouth uh, breather you're drying out your 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 throat yeah. it's just it was like one big cycle there were so many steps he's like oh listen if we do the nose surgery the adenoid surgery the this the that the change in diet the voice therapy, and all of this manages to shrink your vote oh he's like and start drinking water and sleeping please like <laughs> I, I, I have a really hard time drinking water, I, you know, and I never sleep. So he's like, and, and you need to like stop teaching and this and no oh gigs for two months. Goodness. But he's like, maybe we'll manage to shrink them. If we do, we'll avoid the surgery. But honestly, he was not so optimistic. And um, I went home that day and actually had a conversation with Shimmy. I had like minimal speech in me. It was like this type of conversation. And I said, this was such a wake up call for me in so many ways, because first and foremost, the first thing I did, I went home and I remember where I was sitting at my dining room table and I had like a conversation with Hashem. I need my voice back. I need my voice back, please. Like I'm begging you. And I'm not a believer in, in, in making trades with Hashem. I don't think that's a fair thing to do. But what I did say is this, Hashem, I'm going to make you a promise that if somehow you, because I had been yelled at my whole life, like put your stuff out there. You could inspire so many people. Please put it out for a lot of reasons. And I said, I'm going to go out of my comfort zone and I'm going to say that if you give me my voice back, as soon as it's strong enough, I will go out there. I don't know to what capacity, but I promise that I will start to use it for good things and to make, hopefully to uplift, to inspire, to encourage whatever I can. I will make that my life's mission. Mm. Okay. I have chills. I have chills. Thank you. (laughs) But I don't even, but, but, and, and then I was talking to Shimmy about it. I remember we were discussing this and, and then, you know, that's what happened. Um, I started voice therapy. I had, well, I was supposed to have the knees, the nose surgery. And then literally I'll tell you what happened. So I, was, I had the, I started the diet change. I started drinking, not just, you know, they have like smart water. I have um, alkaline water. Mm. It's like super high in pH and balance out acid. I started drinking alkaline water, like a camel. I started mm. changing my sleeping pattern. I'd sleep a lot more. I tried really, I started wearing a mic to work so that um, as a teacher, I wouldn't have to exert so much. I started uh, rigorous voice therapy with my incredible voice therapist, Dr. Linda Carroll, who I love. She's not just an incredible voice therapist, but she's a good person as well. Mm. And I just started making a lot of changes and slowly but surely the nodule started shrinking, mm, yeah. wow. which was so amazing. And I went back for a second laryngoscopy and he's like, wow, they're not gone, but they're really shrinking. I think we can avoid the surgery. This is amazing. And I said, okay. And actually, this is an interesting thing. That's when I said, okay, I'm going to go out there. I didn't really know to what extreme. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll open an Instagram page. You know, nice. I was like, I'm just going to share covers. That's what I was, That's what I think I planned to do. I didn't really think to, like, 
sing on stage or mm-hmm. I was like, I'm just going to share music with people that can be inspiring. That was really my main thing. So I started doing like little covers. I opened an Instagram page and it was really nice. And um, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Here we are two years, two years later. Wow. Um, and Baruch Hashem, I'm really grateful. And um, that's really how I got started. A lot of it was with, you know, the guidance of so many friends and family and my Rav, who I constantly ask all my Shilas to. Like, even at the time, I was like, what do you mean, Kalish? I can't put my music out. And I spoke to my Rav and I got, you know, I, I there have been a lot of times where I've gotten opportunities and I've said no because of Das Torah. Like, I'm very into that. Mm, yeah. um, I have my boundaries. I have my Gazarim. I'm very careful um, because I want to stay true to my goal. I didn't get into this for me. I didn't get into this. Um, and I, I'm not going to be like this holy person and say like, oh, I don't I don't enjoy it when people tell me that they enjoy it. And I don't, oh, I love mm. being on stage, not from an egotistical way. I just love the experience. I love yeah. interacting with yeah, people. Yeah, absolutely. I, I yeah, love you're, it. You're oh, being your true self absolutely. when you're and, out And there. you're getting yeah. your gift to the and, world. You're using yeah. your gift. I mean, that's amazing. And then I think a big part of it was I ate, honestly, because I, well, this all started, by the way, it was 2019. So I, I opened my page February 27th, 2020. And like about 15 days later, the world was hit with COVID. Uh, what page did you open? Instagram. My Instagram. Oh, yeah. And then the world was hit with COVID about 15 days later, which by the way, my, my, my nose surgery was scheduled for March 20th, 2020. Oh my, oh my And it was like when they were like elective surgeries might be canceled. They were calling me every day to have fever, to have fever, to have fever. And then three days before my surgery, they canceled it. And I <sighs> cried so hard because I was yeah. so sure that that was going to be like the last step in my healing. Um, and yeah, I mean, and and then that's where I got started. The interesting point, which I'm not going to go into now, unless like you bring it up later on, is the fact that even when I started, like I was so into the fact that, well, my voice is raspy. I'm going to wait till it's nice and smooth like the rest of the world. And that's when I'll really go out there. And it took me a lot of, of, of work to realize that firstly don't wait for the perfect moment yes. oh that's like, yeah that's so important i think that yeah. we me as a person if i could tell you one of my flaws it is try is waiting for the perfect moment yeah. oh yeah and yeah we can relate it's so easier Listen, perfection that, is the enemy of good good is what is that yeah, line yeah, yeah. yeah. Or perfection will but just ruin your life that's, a quote. Just your <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a quote that i heard at the sea of my shots and it changed my life oh, it was yeah. a few it was like a month before this it was january 2020 wow. and it, that was like a mindset that I had kept like every time I was like, well, my voice is still raspy and I can't, I don't sound super clear. It took me a long time to realize that what I first, first I went out, I was like, okay, despite my raspy flaw of a voice, I still do my music. Then I was like, Hey, I'm okay with the rasp, but now I actually am appreciative of it. So yeah. <laughs> but when you full sing, circle. I'm trying to think, does the rasp come through? I don't, I don't really notice it. It does. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it gives you that like coffee house. Vibe, exactly, you know? yeah. <laughs> it, adds, it adds character. Yeah, it does for sure. Yeah. But so, but but yeah, I mean that. And then the really the big thing was I think Ia was like such a. I mean, and I have to credit Bracha for that. That was really like something that she was like, "Let's do this," mm. and I was like, "Okay." And I think we even to this day like we're like we never dreamed that it would become such an anthem of a, right. a song. It, was, was, it like, was the camp song Ooh. for my, for my, for my oldest daughter in her camp, like the whole summer, the whole summer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it yeah. just, it snowballed and things, you know, I was like, Oh, okay. I'll put out Zahreinu and let's do never alone. And Oh, never sure. Alone, you want me to yeah. do it? Yeah. Everyone, someone called me to do my first show. I was like, sure. And everyone, someone called me to fly me out for the first time. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Because again, this wasn't really done so much right, recently. Right. Uh, I guess it was done. I want to say it was done. It wasn't always done to the scale that it's done nowadays. The yeah. past the couple level. of years, would you say? Like, when Explosion. has it really exploded? Yeah. I think so. Right. Yeah, I think so. Right. And so listen, nice. I have to credit those people, those organizations that believe in the female industry, those producers that believe in the female industry. And we just did a show now, um, you know, Chalmoid Pesach, uh, 5,000 seats, and we sold out. And that was... That was, Sabbath. that was Ellie, Ger- yeah. you know, I like to say Rev Ellie Gerstner as a producer, believing in the female industry and saying, yeah. I believe we can sell at 5,000 seats in even when half the world was in Orlando. And it was such an incredible experience. And it's, I really have to say it's so humbling, firstly, but it's so, it's so humbling to see that there are people that really believe in it and are really seeing that this is a thing and it's, sure. it's a gift. It's when a gift. Hashem wants something to happen. Those doors are going to open. Like Absolutely. that's the story. Like Hashem wanted you in this position. He just gave you opportunities. It has to be that way because honestly, there's no other way. Like I never in my wildest dreams would have done this. I wouldn't have made it. And you know, people think like I was such a loud kid and I was 
I was not. I mean, I mean, I was loud. Like I was a little like I was like at least my, my family called it. I was like kooky. I was like well, you know, but like I was petrified to raise my hand in school. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like I wasn't that kid. So let's talk about that a little bit. Like your you know your personality. I mean, even when you're telling us the story, it's just. You have this huge smile. For those of us who are watching a YouTube video, you can see you cannot divorce Shane Foster from Yeah, it's contagious. I mean, I'm, it's, it's, like, it's reflecting up. I'm like, yeah. I'm also. Like, yeah. it's exactly. It's, then, it's, it's contagious. And, it's great. You know, it's, it's such a bracha to have some chas I think, you know, we all have our different yeah. person, personality traits. And I, that's what I'm curious about with you. Is this, like, joy, you know, your, your simcha that, you know, really comes forth from you? Mm-hmm. Would you say that's, you know, personality? Or is that something that you you need to work on and that you do work on? It's so funny because I, I mean, I'm flattered and honored to get this question so often because Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, like being a joyful person is so important and I don't necessarily view myself as, you know, the epitome of joy. And believe me, I guys, I have my bad days. You don't want to watch me. I'm like, like, everyone can watch me when like, you know, but, but Mm -hmm. Baruch Hashem, that being said, firstly, thank you. Because I am a big believer in also like accepting compliments. That's a big thing. I always teach that to girls, by the way, whenever like my best mitzvah girls or when I do a show, I'm like, you know, people think humility Mm -hmm. is saying, no, 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 no. Humility is saying, we just we discussed this before, Alex, Mm -hmm. Um, recognizing what you have, appreciating it, uh, acknowledging it by because you think that saying no, you're actually going to make the compliment giver feel really bad. <laughs> and Hashem feel bad. Hashem gave you And then you're also exactly. telling like, the word creation of Hashem. If Hashem gave you something. And then attribute up to him, which by the way, and I'm going to really answer your question. Yeah, that yeah. was the one thing that I left out of what I said earlier, which is usually my key point, is that this whole voiceless story was such a wake-up call to me that everything is from Hashem. You know, we have, we have such we live in such a comfortable world and we have so many people who are beautiful, who are wealthy, who are talented. And very often people allow themselves to forget that this is a God given thing. And I always say, you know, like, what, what can you take credit for? What you can't do? I'm like, listen, something that is literally Hashem could take away tomorrow morning. Don't take credit for that. Things that you choose to do with it. Like if someone's really wealthy and they say, I'm so wealthy, I'm amazing. But that's like, but, you worked hard. So definitely if you worked hard to get that, or that's for sure, I'm not denying that you go out there and you make good choices with your money that Hashem gave you take credit for that girl. Mm-hmm. Like I, 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 you, you tell, you know, I want to donate something and that's going to, that's amazing. So I'm very much into that, that firstly, um, when it comes to compliments, like take it and then also say it's all from Hashem because Beautiful. it really is. And that's what my, my story taught me is that I woke up one morning without a voice and, you know, even to this day, the fact that, and I didn't mention this earlier, is that my nodules, nodules don't go away. Nodules are mm-hmm. always there. If you have it, um, it's always there. And it's just a matter of maintaining, you know, a good, healthy health, like life, whatever lifestyle right, to not. keep them shrunk. Because, I mean, I had a show a few weeks ago and I was overexerting myself. I wasn't sleeping. Da, 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 boom, the nodules came back oh. and I had to go on steroids. And I'm constantly oh. in awareness that they could come back at any given moment. And it could ever, it could eventually come back to the point where it's beyond repair if I'm really yeah. not careful. So I have that mindset all the time that Hashem could take away my voice at any given moment. Wow. Who am I to take the credit for this? Wow. You know, like, I, no, but I'm serious. It's, 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 and I think that's something that we very often forget if it's something is given to us by Hashem and he could take it. It's like, you know, what if you, what if you woke up tomorrow with only the things you thanked Hashem for today? Mm. You know, oh, or I would say only if you took credit for today, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's a great you know, perspective. It's, it's, a, perspective. it's a great perspective. It's a very yeah. great. But going back to what you were yeah. saying, yeah. so listen, I can't. I at first I'm very grateful because a lot of it is definitely um, God given. Mm-hmm. Baruch Hashem, I was blessed always with. I would say like they like a, a cheery disposition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but disposition. So yeah. Yeah. so much of it is a choice, and I was just speaking to my very good friend Esty Blaustein right before we got onto this podcast. And I was discussing this with her mm-hmm. because. You know, a lot of people are given the exact opposite. I mean, I have very close friends who were just given depression. Mm-hmm. And like, what, like, like, it's, it's almost like it's not fair, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm like, I, I almost said to her, I said, I don't know if I can talk about this because there are so many people out there who wish that they were born with that. And, and it's like, mm-hmm. I want to just take a second and just validate that anyone who so, is out absolutely. there dealing with depression I dive in every single day for any victim of what I, meaning if I have something, I thank Hashem for it. And then I say, thank you, Hashem. Please, anyone that doesn't have it, please mm. give it to them. Mm, you know, and I'm telling you that I have very close people in my life who, whose lives have been ruined 
really like ruin beyond it's not their choice just by right. by the fact that they weren't given the choice of of, of, of happiness they weren't born with it so i want to just take a minute before i say anything get just oh, almost yeah, a yeah. disclaimer validate that anyone that was was given this like challenge it is I, something that i don't know that i would ever make it through it's mm. so challenging mm. and i just want to say that first that being Beautiful. said Baruch Hashem, i was given definitely a lot of some chasachayim and on top but but so much of it was work mm-hmm. so there was like i got like a certain percentage amount was given and then so much of it was work and i i was telling sd i said you know when i was in high school um i think that's really when i started um, because that's when we start really having to work on ourselves. That's when I started to realize um, something that has shaped my life going forward. If I'm in a situation um, and I'm in a situation, let's just say, for example, that I, um, okay, let me think we're going to, okay, let's say I lost all my money. Chas mm-hmm. So I'm in a situation where I would consider myself poor. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I would say I'd rather be poor and happy than poor. Take a minute. Get it? Takes a minute. It takes a minute. No, I don't. Get if it. I am anyways in this situation, mm-hmm. right? I'd rather be in the situation uh-huh. and, and be happy. Be have have a happy, have a good day, have a good outlook than just be in the situation because I'm in the situation regardless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So listen, I said and I said to her, I said, you know, people think like, oh, you've been through nothing in your life. I could start listing. My family has been part of every organization under the sun because we've been through literally almost every challenge you could think wow. of. And, um, and, and very often, even though Barksham, like I wasn't afflicted with it, I've been the person holding my family together through a lot, a lot of pain. I've had, I mean, the hospital is not, a, not a foreign place for us, mm-hmm. you know, Hatsala yeah. comes to our, <laughs> we've been through a lot, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and I think that throughout all these situations, I've always decided I'm in this situation. Now, whether it's going to change or not, I'm definitely going to work. Just if it's if it's not within my control, oh, that's a whole other story. Right. If let's say it's something that is not going to change, I have no ability to change it. I may as well have the best attitude that I can to make this the best experience that I can. So I've had family friends or people in my life who were given something like like an illness with, uh, you know, like where everything looks really, really bleak. Yeah. And they said, well, this is a situation <laughs> I have, I have a choice here. Am I going to sit in my hospital bed until however this ends? Am I going to sit and I'm going to be miserable? And I have every right to be miserable. Sure. I can cry. I can play every card I want because I am in the worst situation possible. Or am I going to dance through it? Am I going to sing through it? Am I going to give myself the gift of happiness? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, there was a girl, Monkey Hurt, that I was very close to. Um, I don't know. I'm sure a lot of listeners um, knew who she was. She was an unbelievable girl who um, had cancer. She was so young. I think she was eight when she was Neftaras. Oh, I was very close with her. I got to know her. And um, this is something that she taught me. She was so ill. And every time I would be on FaceTime with her or in the hospital with her, she was... I mean, like she was bruised and she was prodded and she just smiled through it. And she was, she would dance through it. And she was like, I mean, and listen, I want to say this is not eight years old. And that's what she taught me this. She really taught me this. Like, this is the situation I'm going to decide like to not to embrace it really. It's just like (laughs) being sad. You know, and I even have this attitude when someone does something hurtful to me. Actually, when someone does something, let's say, you know, something, I had a situation with someone and they they, they took something from me in a sense, right? Yeah. I always say, it happened. I'm not going to allow them to take any more from me oh, by so now smart. being upset about it. I'm going to be upset as a human emotion. It's important. And I'm super into that. Don't, don't, I mean, I was, for many, many years when I went through some things when I was younger, um, I, I was in denial. Denial is not good, guys. Mm, it, well, sure. it's not healthy. I had to work through it afterwards. And, you know, um, I'm not saying be in denial. Right, right. Feel your um, feelings. All, feel your feelings. And I'll feel those feelings. But yeah. then don't let it take any more from you right. than it has. Move ahead. And, and, you know, I think it's such an important thing. And that's why I say that, again, and I'm going to say a disclaimer that not for everyone, but in a sense, happiness is a choice. And I learned sure. this. Yeah. I learned this when I was in seminary, actually. And this is going back a long time. But I had this incredible woman. I I, I hope she's going to allow me to credit her by her name, um, Mrs. Gold. And she had this, like, it was called the Joy Club. 
Mm. And we would, she, she taught me such an incredible lesson. Firstly, she was, she is, and she's such a joyful person. And she just, you think I radiate joy? <laughs> I, I, he's, he's Mashiach in the sense. Wow. She would walk around the window and just go, joy, joy. And I mean, <laughs> thought it was funny, but we were in the best mood. <laughs> it was amazing. But she taught me one lesson, and I think this was incredible. She said, you have a picture. Let's say you have a picture of, I don't know, a worm. <laughs> a worm. Okay. The picture. You can put a wooden frame on it. You can put a diamond frame on it. You can put a glass frame on it. You could put a popsicle stick frame on it. However you choose to frame that picture wow. is how it's going to be. Now, with every situation that you're in in life, this is the picture. The picture of the worm is the picture of the worm. It's up to you. What frame are you putting on this situation in life? Hmm. Are you going to put, are you going to say like, Okay, like, you know, and again, I'm going to say it's not easy, but how do you frame, how do you reframe a situation? I, I you love know? the visual of the actual yeah, frame. That's me brilliant. too. It's, it's amazing. so good. It's a great and this, tip. I feel like this also like leads so nicely into like that, the question that we also had of like, how can we add more joy to our life? Like that, like even like just like being mindful of like how am I framing the situation the situation is the situation yeah, the it's the, the situation but like how am I framing it and am I letting and I love also the idea of like not letting it t- like if it's a icky situation like not letting it take anymore like feel your feelings and then like okay I'm gonna frame it da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. don't it's like it's like I always say don't let don't let that person take any more from you than they already have you know yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> it, yeah, it yeah. helps you stop ruminating and and because yeah. then you're like, oh, I'm just giving them way too much of my emotional energy. <laughs> you know? Rumination, exactly, so exactly, hard, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I guess, yeah. What are your tips on like adding more joy in our into our life? Well, okay. So firstly, I mean, I'm not like the person to be able to say this. No, I'm serious. Like I, I was, I don't have a degree of enjoy. Um, I'm just gonna say based off of my own experience, what I found really, really uh, shaped like so much of my life um is that very often um we we live in a world which i'm so grateful that we finally got to a stage of self-care um you know take care of yourself and 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 i i i'm so into that i think it's incredible and it's so important and very often people even like with my personality we we're so we're so busy that we stop we forget to stop and take care of ourselves so i'm gonna say first and foremost like it's so important to take care of yourself but i think we think that is the key to happiness we think taking care of ourselves is the key to happiness like oh like i i mean i i do myself with this all the time like you're so stressed out just go and um i don't know uh take a walk Take a bath, whatever, yeah, whatever, and yeah. then you'll feel better. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm like, why, why, why? Yeah. And this is not the key to happiness, but I believe it's a very big uh, component that helps to gain joy. Is give to others. Mm. Um, Ooh. Yes. No, go, go. No, go, no, go, no, go. no. Yeah, exactly. I think that's. I think that's great. I want to hear you go. I, you go <laughs> I think that. <laughs> The reason that it's so funny is because you would think at first, like, wait, that's the exact opposite. Like, right now, I just need to take care of myself and make myself happy. But actually, when you give to others, you end up making yourself so much more filled with joy. And I know we always say, like, chesed is the gift that keeps on giving. And we say, mm-hmm. like, we, you know, if, if you've ever watched, like, a, a camp, I, I love Camp Pass. If you ever watched, like, a Camp Pass or anything, you have you always hear an interesting thing that the counselors say, and I've said this my whole life. They'll talk about their campers and they'll say, you know, I I came here thinking I was going to be the one that was like right, doing right. for them. Right. And they ended up doing so much more for me. And you're like, oh, it sounds so nice. And it's such a great poster. No, it's really true. <laughs> it's really so true. And every time I hear someone say that, I get emotional because I saw it so much in my life, you know, as, as a kid, I think it was very, it was definitely very much more in style when I was in high school and everything to just be part of a lot of chesed organizations. And I, I, I really, um, I mean, Sundays I was at Yudei Chesed, which is a special needs organization. And I was going to my Chai Lifeline family on Thursdays. And I think I actually, well, I'll tell you so much. I got to a point where it was like, really, I didn't know how to balance it. Like Mm -hmm. eventually when I was like, do you know that chesed begins at home? <laughs> and I will say that to everyone before you jump around, 
take a look yeah. at your own family. You know, I, I, there's a lot of special needs children um, and adults in my life, or I like, as I like to say, adults and children with special needs, because mm-hmm. they're not labeled by that. I'm sorry that I even said that. Please cut that out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of adults and children with special needs in my life that I'm very close to. And I would go and I would take them out and I would visit them. And then I would come home to my old brother who has special needs. And I'm like, when was the last time you took him for ice cream? Like, mm perspective you know so then I actually started really doing more for him and doing more for my own family but that I want to say that was one of my like realizations when I was when I was a teenager I was like so such a chesed machine that like I was losing my focus a little bit you know um and and then eventually I learned that there's a balance you do for others you do for your family you do for yourself it's all that balance life is always a balance but anyways my point is you know you would think like oh I'm gonna go now and when I'm in a bad mood, I'm going to go to a hospital patient and sing for them. No, no, no. I need to take care of myself right now. Mm. And, and you know, what's interesting is that there have been so many times where I've said like, oh, I'm going to go to the hospital and sing for someone. Or I'm going to go to someone who's, uh, you know, whatever the situation. And I was in such a bad mood beforehand. And I was even like, oh, I'm in a bad mood today. Like, it's not going to be good, whatever. Yes. Uh, and I come back in best mood because at the I, end yeah. of the day, yeah. when you give to others, you are filling up a piece of yourself. And because that's, we're actually, we're on this world to give to each other. And you, I think there's a piece of your neshama that's like, thank you. Mm, you were nice. ignoring me. And and I think it's really, really important that when we give to others, um, we end up, we, we, we're really giving to ourselves. And I think that's really a big, a big key component to, to joy, honestly, is yeah. go out there and, and, and don't definitely take care of yourself. And, and do good for yourself. And that's for sure important. And also go out there and do something for someone else. And you'll see like on the smallest thing. I mean, I did the, I did the, the funnest thing ever the other day. Uh, I have an Instagram post about this actually on my page because we started like a chain of kindness. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to start, please continue. And I, I went to Target. This is the funnest thing ever. Go check it out on my page. Yeah. Um, and I, I bought a bunch of gift cards, like Amazon gift cards and Starbucks gift cards. And um, and then I went to the checkout and I had him scan them. And I said, oh, that one's for you. And he's like, what? why? And I'm like, what do you mean? You're a person and you're working hard. And I, I wanted to thank you. Please take that $20. Amazing. That's amazing. Wow. amazing. And, thank That's you. Amazing. and then I said, thank you. And then I said, oh, and by the way, the other five are for all the other people here, all the cashiers. And I went around and I gave them, and I'm not saying this to say like, oh, I'm such an amazing person. I want to see the story about like what happened. Uh-huh. I walked out, not just feeling good, like, oh, I'm such a great person. It's just, that's not, that's not what joy, that's not the joy that you should be getting from giving. If you're getting that type of joy, like an egotistical joy, yeah, like, right, oh, right. I'm so amazing that I went and did this for other people. Mm, yeah. Not so good. Um, <laughs> But it, it it does something to your neshama, literally. Totally. It fills you up because that's what it's part of your neshama saying, thank you for checking that box for me today. Right, right. And I mean, we're here in this world to emulate Hashem and Hashem is the ultimate giver, right? That's right. So then we're, we're yeah. really doing what we're meant to do. And I think also like we talked about joy and positivity being very contagious and there's like, it's like a jug. Like you watch, if you bring joy to someone else and you see them being joyful, it's like you, you you'd have to be like, have a heart of stone not for that not to impact you like i love uh, what you said on a shama level like your shama is like yeah, craving that yeah you know? really it really mm-hmm. is and and, and it's very interesting by the way because that you said that we're saying that a shama because that's something that um <laughs> i keep bringing her up but Estia just told me she said that like our brains people think like our brains happiness i, I don't get the quote properly mm-hmm. but she said she's like you know we think that like our brains are on this world our brains are supposed to do the job of making us happy. No, no, no. Your brain's here to keep you alive. (sighs) Joy, joy is, is isn't a shama thing. I really think like it's a combination, but yeah. Yeah. Ask Esty. She'll tell you the quote much better than me. (laughs) Well, I guess, so we're talking about like what, what brings us joy and, and about joy and the connection to the shama. And I guess let's just focus like on the flip side of like what, what can rob us of joy? Mm. You know, or, or what are the challenges facing from oh. that you see that is kind of like blocking us from really accessing that mm-hmm, joy? Mm-hmm. I think the biggest, and again, I'm saying this off of my life and off of what I've seen. And I'm so interesting by the way, when you ask these questions, everyone will have a different answer. Mm-hmm. Just based off of my life, I think the biggest thing that robs us of joy is jealousy, comparison. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, you know, you have to take 
you have to take a minute and say like, well, I'm so grateful for what I have. I'm so, so grateful for the direction that I'm in. I'm so grateful for my success. I'm so grateful for my gifts. And I'm so also, right. And the minute that you start focusing on what other people have, I mean, listen, we don't all have the same things. We don't all have the same gifts. It's not possible. So if you start focusing on other people, you're literally changing your focus and by the way, I did not even think about this question in advance. This is just like what came to my mind. But you start to change your focus and you say, you know, you're like, oh, look what she has. Boom. Look what she has. Boom. Look what she has. Mm-hmm. And, and for those not, those just listening, my hand is like dropping. Okay. Because you're literally, you're, you're, you're focusing so much on what everyone else has that you can't even take a minute to focus on your own, yeah. your own good. And I think that's a really big thing. Comparison, you know, comparison jealousy the, what's the one word i'm forgetting i don't know i don't know but the point is that yeah. when you when you when you focus on what other people's strengths are and not your own of course they're going to feel horrible yeah. well, that's firstly a big part of it i think that we live in a world where it's so easy i mean like what's what social is i happen to be a big fan of social media i know people put it down a lot i believe that everything in this world was put on it put on this world to be used for the best or the worst mm-hmm. and it's up to you who you follow it's up to you right. you know you in a sense Mm-hmm. Take care, okay, take care of it. But I think, in a sense, um, in a sense, like it is. But let's say for me, I think social media is such a beautiful thing. And why was I saying this? In a lot of ways, and I love what it has done for us. At the same time, if you're gonna look and you're gonna be like, "Wow, she's in Paris. She's wearing that. I can't yes. afford that. Yeah, it's impossible. She has. Yeah. She has the perfect family." chances are by the way guys she doesn't right. you know i get this a lot i just did a shabbaton a beautiful shabbaton with kesher nafshi and one oh, thing wow. yeah which is such yeah. an incredible organization yeah. and i spoke a lot to the siblings that were there and i told them a lot of my life story it was like real dmc talk about dmc is a real i get yeah. a lot i told them about a lot of the things that i've been through in my life and the challenges that i faced and then i op- invited them to open up and share their struggles and obviously it's so much easier to do that once other people have shared um 100%. and i'm really okay to talk about the things that i've gone through and um, how they've honestly just made me a better, stronger person, um, Bar Hashem. But the reason I'm saying this is because at the end, so many of them were like, mm. "We thought you were perfect." Yeah, right. I'm like, "Are you actually kidding me?" I'm like, <laughs> "I'm the far." Firstly, I am the farthest thing from perfect, and my life is the farthest thing from perfect right, right. because we're human beings. And I guarantee you that if, and this is a big thing that I have to say about like comparison and jealousies, you know, there's that much of like we don't actually know what anyone else is carrying. And if you actually saw someone else, you're like, I want what she has. Oh yeah, yeah, let me show you what's in her little peckle over there. Right, exactly. No scratch, I'll, I'll take my own. I'll keep my own you know? peckle, because we all have a peckle. A hundred percent, yeah, exactly. Wearing, you're yeah, yeah exactly. we all have our things. So that's a big part of it. That's number one. Number two is people, I think very often think, um, um, I think I think what robs us of joy is never living in the moment. Mm, that's so true. And mm. Never, yeah never being grateful in the moment. Like, you know, um, uh, there we're, we're constantly saying like, when I have that, when I have that, when I have that, like, even I'll be very vulnerable for a reason for a second. This is not something I really talk about yeah. at all. Not because it's embarrassing or hurtful. It's just not something that I speak about, but if I'm being honest for a second, I'm not married. And I have s- had so many opportunities in my life from when I was, you know, 18, 19. And I, right when I was first, very, very young, I said like, well, when I'm married, mm-hmm. everything's going to be good. And when I'm married, I'll do this. And, and you know, I got, I actually like live by this concept of like, stop. Like I said, stop waiting for the perfect moment. Right. I mean, and, and, and I, I'm taking advantage of the situation right now. And, you know, I've traveled all over the world. I've bar Hashem, I've done so many things and I've been able to do so many things because of my situation mm-hmm. because I'm not married. Um, and, and there's a few aspects that number one is that not like this. Oh, when I'm married, I'll be happy. When I have a baby, I'll be happy. When I'm, my kid is big enough and giving me nachas, when my kid is, is doing the right thing, I'll be happy. Mm. We're constantly waiting for the next thing to make us happy. And sometimes we just say, whether the situation is a good or bad situation, how can I achieve happiness within the situation? So let's say something like being single, it's not a happy situation. How can I achieve happiness within the situation that I'm in? Mm. Um, is that I'm going to live this situation to its fullest. So it has a lot of a lot of cons, but let's say there's a pro with the fact that I have the ability theoretically to 
go and travel all the time because I don't, you know, okay, so I'm going to go do that. And I'm going to take advantage wow. of that in a sense. Um, and that's honestly, and I, it's funny that I got into this. I never speak about this, mm-hmm. but I get this so often, like give us single girls, single women. Uh, I, I mean, I don't have any to give you except a giant hug. Um, but, but I will say this, I, you know, stop waiting for the perfect moment and appreciate what you're in right now because yeah you know that that's also like a key to joy and 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 even the simplicity of it you know there's the story of i wish i knew the story better but there's the story of like the the king and his daughter maybe and she was sick and they said in order for her to be healed she has to wear the shirt of the happiest man um in in the country and they said okay so first they went to the wealthiest man and he's like I'm being honest, look, we have your shirt. He's like, why? And they said, well, you must be the happiest man. You have all the money in the world. He's like, I don't know what to tell you, but um, if you knew the other situations in my life, I'm far from happy. And then they went to the most talented person in the world. And he was like, I may be so talented. You don't even know. Like, I went through this. I'm going through this. I'm so far from happy. Yeah. I don't believe in myself. I, I'm, I'm self-conscious. I, I'm not happy. Go to someone else. And they couldn't find a happy man. And eventually they heard this. I think and I could be really misquoting it a little bit. Um, but they heard this sound coming out of the forest. It's like a flu. And it was a man in a shack. And... I forgot exactly how they figured out that he was the happiest man in the world. But eventually they said, like, are you truly happy? He said, yeah. And they said, can we have your shirt? And he's like, I'm so sorry. I only have the one that's on my Aww. back. Or he said, I don't even have it. something like that. Right, like, right, right. And, and it was, it's a, the, basically the concept. The lesson is like, you don't have to have so much mm. to be happy. Simplicity often, like I said, we're constantly chasing. Like even me, you know, I love to travel. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to Singapore this summer. Yeah, but you can also really, also, I'm not saying that Singapore is not going to make me really happy. And I'm going to be in this beautiful world. But also at the same time, you should be able to find the same happiness in Miami Beach. And you should be able to say the happiness in your front yard. Mm-hmm. Right. And don't expect. Ex- yeah. Cleveland, Ohio, you know what I'm saying? Um, don't don't always rely on external things. I think like yeah, find great. happiness from what's in you. Important. I don't know if this is all making sense, but it's, it's amazing. So it's great. Sense. I yeah. just also love this idea of like not chasing for the big stuff and thinking that, that those have all the answers. Right. I remember just like a stupid, stupid, silly example from my own life. My kitchen. I don't love my kitchen. <laughs> I, everyone knows me. Knows kitchen. me that I don't love my yes, kitchen. Yes, yes, this kitchen. But I bought this. It's a galley kitchen, so it's pretty narrow. And I really needed more counter space and storage space, so I bought this little this island from Wayfair. My daughter picks it out. We it love was, Wayfair. Yeah yeah, 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 it's the best. It doesn't match. It was too big, and it was driving me crazy because I like couldn't really open the dishwasher properly. Uh, like the kids would be in there. There was like no space for them. It was making me nutty. So I, what do I do? This stupid island costs one hundred fifty dollars. The next thing I'm doing is calling people to renovate my kitchen. Like seriously, I'm like I cannot handle this anymore. So I'm like getting quotes, blah blah blah. And then like I forgot what. But I was like I couldn't stand the, the the thing so much. So I just like pulled it out of the kitchen, put it in the basement, and then all of a sudden I'm like my kitchen is so big. I wonder where it went. <laughs> I know, and I'm like I'm loving this. My toddler's dancing. We actually remember I told you my kids were dancing to your music. That was like that oh, day that we took the islands out of the kitchen. Um, <laughs> Amazing. Like, okay, there's room for them to dance. Oh, I could open up the dishwasher. And it's like that story where you take, you put all of the animals in the house yes. and then you take them all out. And, and then you have enough room. I, I stopped dealing with the, with the contractor. I'm like, my kitchen's fine now. <laughs> That's that is- I'm making the most of it. Like I just, I stopped seeing the bad and I just focused on the things I don't love about it, but they're good enough. Like it's good. Amazing. You know? That's amazing. That's, That's my amazing. story. Okay. That's an amazing <laughs> story, by the way. That is an amazing story. I love that. I love okay. that. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this amazing conversation, Shanzi. I just I love it. it's all authentic and true from your life, and that's what I, you don't need the PhD in joy. Exactly. If that exists and happiness. <laughs> you don't need to be Brene Brown researcher. Yeah, this is great. This is it's great. It's just you. Although Brene Brown is very cool. She's gonna yes. come on. She's gonna be She's a guest totally- on DMC. We're, we're gonna have her. <laughs> You're gonna one manifest day. this. <laughs> I want to say one thing by the way before you ask me whatever this last question yeah, is. Yeah. We have the ability to give joy to so many other people. Yeah, this is so important, yeah. That's like, should I say the thing that, is that what you're going to ask me? I'm not, but you know what? This is why it's so important is because we get so wrapped up and stuck in our own pecolas, you know? Like we literally get... Just about ourselves and like our own, like whatever. Yeah, and like you forget about everyone else and then it's like, but don't you realize like the gem and the secret is really right in front of you is bring joy to other people and you will feel joy. 
I just love yeah. it. Yeah. And you know what else it is? It's that people look at it as like this giant obstacle sometimes. I mean, I do. Like sometimes I'm listen, I'm we, we've discussed this. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And I'm like, when it comes to my friends' birthdays, let's say I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go all out and I'm gonna I'm, <laughs> yeah, so that, and then nothing happens. By the way, that's a, because it's a, then nothing happens. You know, we won't sometimes we're like so like, oh, to go out there and make a difference and to change people's lives, I gotta stand in time square. No, 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 no literally take 30 seconds right now and send five texts mm. or to to people that you appreciate and just say like mm. or or and say and say you know just want to tell you that you're such a good person if i really appreciate it. how long with oh, yeah, i'm gonna try this right now okay i'm gonna do it on, on the air everybody live action joy production they're gonna be like shane's on air. air okay we're I'm gonna, gonna see how this actually turns right. out okay, <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna do this right now i'm gonna say this okay hey Hope, well, I'm not gonna hope you're doing well because I just spoke to her. Hey, just wanted to say Aww. that you're pretty awesome. That's fantastic. And, and I really appreciate you. Just wanted you to know. You're like, Shanty, what are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? They won't Joy, because Joy I really try to do this from time because I realize eventually this perfectionism, this like block of like to do big things, we gotta do big. No, just like no, take a few not. minutes. Yeah. Call your yes. moments. Call call a family member. Let's. She responds. Oh no, she didn't. That we'll all for a couple of minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Just take take a minute and just say like, just call someone or go like honestly. Okay, not financially. That's that's a big thing. Also, people say like, oh, I don't have what to give. Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't have money. It's a so no. It's a card. You don't it's have attention. To have it's money. attention. I heard that yeah, line. Connection. Line. You don't have to have much to show how much you care. I saw uh-huh. the line. line. And I thought That's it's good. great. And I, I, you know, just make the world a little bit of a better place. And firstly, you'll be feeling more joy. You'll feel like you'll, you'll feel better. And also you can, we have the ability to spread joy to so many other people yeah. Yeah. in su- such a simple way. Yeah. And it's such an amazing thing to remember that we have the ability to do that. Like we're, we're, we're like, Perfect. we're like, I call in my class, I call it kindness giver. It's like, are you, like, we're kindness givers, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You do that little thing with the buckets, and it's amazing. amazing. That's fantastic. Shanti, I just, I feel so privileged to have you on DMC. Yes. And I'm privileged I, to be part of such no, a beautiful oh, Thank you. No, and it's you, just, you're both unbelievable women. I listen to the DMC podcast. I'm loving it. It's so enjoyable, especially down to the sphere. I'm like in my car, and by the way, I'm a big podcast person. Yeah. And I am loving what you're doing. I'm so honored to be a part of it. I'm so humbled. <laughs> thank you so much. And just to be able to really just highlight these um, truths that you walk around in your life and just to get into your heart a little bit for you to share that with us um, and to share with our listeners. Really, it's an honor. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Here's this episode's takeaway. Keep in mind that joy is all about the small moments. Try to be more mindful of the small things that provoke a positive emotion within you, whether they're physical things or interactions with people. Seek out those joyful moments and they will be found. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Deep Meaningful Conversations as much as we did. And if you did enjoy it that much, can you please let us know? You can help us out by rating and reviewing Deep Meaningful Conversations on the platform that you just listened to it on. People always want to know how. And I'm like, just go back on your phone where you heard it and you just press the star. And if you feel very kind, you can say awesome podcast or something cute. And yeah, we read those reviews. They're very helpful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Deep Meaningful Conversations is on YouTube as well. Hey, everyone who is watching. Hi. Um, And on the Meaningful Minute app. Speaking of Meaningful Minute, we would like to thank the entire team for producing and supporting our podcast. Thank you. And see you next episode.